When looking back on my childhood, there's one company that evokes more nostalgia than any other. The company continuously publishes some of the most innovative and recognizable games today. That company is Nintendo. I'm only going to talk about Nintendo's past as a gaming company, unless you want me to talk about playing cards and love hotels for an hour. Anyways, our story begins between 1973 and 1985, when Nintendo developed its first arcade cabinets. These games were extremely successful, many later being ported to the consoles. These included Mario Bros and Donkey Kong. However, Nintendo didn't start dominating homes until July 15th, 1983, with the Japanese home console, the Famicom, later known in other countries as the NES. Quite frankly, people weren't as trusting in the gaming market anymore. I don't blame them. I'm looking at UET. Anyway, enough of that. Things were about to change with the NES and its brand new controller. Simple, yet effective. And the button layout? Industry standard now. However, the real success is down to its best friend, Super Mario Bros. The game was so revolutionary, it dragged the entire gaming industry out of the gutter once again. The game was that good. The console was the birthplace of many important franchises. These being... The Legend of Zelda, unlike Mario, was all about adventure and exploration. The game lets you figure out everything for yourself. It doesn't give you a sword or a map. You have to figure out everything for yourself. Overall, the NES was a fantastic system and allowed players to escape the real world and enjoy the settings and characters of the most iconic series. Either you're exploring the monster-filled castles of Castlevania, or searching through the space stations of Metroid. All of this could be done in the comfort of your own home. However, things were about to change for players. The Game Boy was huge for Nintendo. The console was a handheld, meaning you could take it everywhere and anywhere. Most of its games were downgraded versions of the NES games. However, one series was about to change that. Tetris was extremely important because it didn't just appeal to the gamers, but it also appealed to everyone else. Nintendo capitalized on a huge audience with this game. It's the summer of 1996. You're eight years old, starting your journey for the first time on your Nintendo Game Boy. Your family? Confused. Where have the double A's gone? You don't notice the time passed in the middle of discovering this brand new world. Suddenly, it's bedtime. You hide under the covers with a torch and lower the volume as much as you can without muting it. Nothing else matters right now. No worries, no burden. Your only concern is your journey to become the master. The world is full of wonder and beauty and you can't wait to explore. A soft knock on the door, and you rush in to hide under the pillow. This is the beginning of your journey with Pokemon. saw the release of Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow in 1999. I think we need to take time to pay respects to Pokemon Green. Left behind, but not forgotten. It would be so awesome. It would be so cool. Anyways, Pokemon wasn't the only franchise on the Game Boy. Both Zelda and Mario got their own outings on this system, and thrived just the same. However, things were about to change for Nintendo's home market. The Super Nintendo took everything that NES did right and turned it up by 100. The console improved graphics, controls, and most importantly, its games. Some of Nintendo's biggest arcade and NES characters return in a fantastic new and improved style on the Super Nintendo. Games like Super Mario World built upon what the prior Mario games set out and introduced new gameplay features including everyone's favourite dinosaur, Yoshi. Not only Mario got a new platformer though, 
but so did Donkey Kong with Donkey Kong Country, which was completely different to its arcade counterpart. Overall, Nintendo was doing really well for themselves. However, a new rival was challenging the plumber himself. Sonic was designed to sell millions, and was directly created to compete with Nintendo's Super Mario. While Nintendo focused on the family-friendly nature of its characters, Sega tried targeting that older audience with Sonic. They did this by giving him a carefree and cocky attitude. Although Sega gave Nintendo a challenge, they still managed to stick through it and come up on top. However, with the industry growing and the hardware improving, Nintendo had something ready to enter this entirely new era of gaming. 